Hey, thanks again for tuning in to uh, Chisholm's Chair Shop. Um, wanted to go over a little bit about the history of the Lincoln Rocker and why um, it's known as a Lincoln Rocker, which it originally was not referred to as. This was a mass-produced rocking chair in America in the 1850s. Um, some, uh, some folks thought that Ben Franklin um, invented this design. He did invent an invention that blew air on a person as they rocked, but they think the original rocking chair originated probably in Europe on a cradle, and then it was moved to a chair. However, rocking chairs are very associated with American furniture, and there are probably more rocking chairs in America than in any other nation or country or place. Um, so, in, on April 14th, 1865, Abraham Lincoln was in the Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., and he was assassinated in one of these chairs, and it hence became known as the Lincoln Rocker. The one he was uh, killed in was upholstered in red velvet. It had very ornate carvings on the crest, and then Henry Ford later bought it, and it's in the Henry Ford Museum now. Um, it's been cataloged in the Smithsonian, I think in 1902, the, the Smithsonian cataloged the piece, but it's still in the Henry Ford Museum, and people can still see it today. Um, I wanted to go over a few things um, regarding the weaving of the chair. I, as you can see, I have the seat off, and in the next episode, you'll see the seat removal itself. But I inserted this video because it's going to be um, very telling as to what I'm going to be talking about in future videos and some of these um, references I have make might make a little more sense to you as you'll see um, you know there are different holes in this chair there's holes in the weaving these and the seven steps pattern is what this is called this is a basic weaving pattern there's seven steps to do it okay but there's also holes in the wood okay and all of these things combined determine how big these holes are the holes in the wood do. Um, so there's different ways of determining what size cane to use. When I looked at this chair initially, as you can tell, the holes in the top in the weaving are just a little bigger than the holes in the seat. And I believe the reason for that is, is because of the curvature of the back, okay? If you were to take a string and run it through the air from point A to point B through the space and connect it, and then cut that string and then laid the string against the curvature, the string would come up short because it's not in a straight line the shortest distance. And that's why these holes are a little bigger than these holes, despite the cane being exactly the same size, okay? So when I look at this chair, I look at these holes at the top, and in my opinion, these are just a little too big. A lot of this can be manipulated as you weave. Weaving is never in straight lines. It looks like it is, but if you sight down one, it's usually curved. Um, these holes at the top, to me, are just a little big, and I think this looks a little bit better. This is, and it's common. You'll see it a lot in especially curved chairs. The holes in the back are all sometimes a little bigger than the holes in the seat, and it's because of the curve. Um, my client intends to use this chair a lot, she says. So I want to make the back as strong as possible, and there's nothing wrong with having the back and the bottom match perfectly. It'll give it more strength. I think this looks a little less gappy than it does up here. So what I'm going to do is use one width cane on the bottom and then a slightly wider one. It's, it's often by half a millimeter or so. On the top okay the cane itself comes from the rattan palm and it's really more of a vine than a palm but one side of a strand of cane is shiny and the other side is flat okay the inner part of the palm the flat part they use for wicker wicker doesn't have a shiny surface uh, wickers flat on all sides and therefore it gets painted a lot um, these are two different widths, but as you can tell, it's so subtle, um, the differences between these two, that 
it doesn't really show up until you're finished. And these holes, you know, if we bump up this cane just a, a hair bigger, these holes are going to match these holes and you'll never see the difference. But I just don't like this as much. Um, there are different ways to determine what size cane to use if you're ever in question over time. This art of this seven step method um, has been found in the pyramids in Egypt. It's been around, they've been doing it for thousands of years. Um, but over time, people have come up with a chart, a handy chart, that'll often help you determine what size cane to use. So like, for example, this says, how many holes are there in six inches? So what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll measure on a flat. You don't want to measure around a curve. You want to find a flat space. And in six inches here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes. So if I come down to my handy chart and want to give myself some reassurance that I'm heading in the right direction, it says number of holes, eight, the spacing between the holes, I've measured up here, and the spacing between the holes is seven eighths. Some of them are closer to three quarters, so it's right in here. And this is telling me to use common, which is even bigger than, it's two sizes up from this. So what I've determined is I'm gonna use the medium for the back, and the narrow medium, which is already on the seat, will stay the same. So in the next episode, I'll show you how to properly remove the seat and then we're going to turn the chair over and start to look at some of the repairs that we need to make. And uh, we'll get started in earnest. So I appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks.